Sioux City native Brittany Donaldson has made a career out of being a trailblazer in professional basketball, one of only a small handful of female coaches in the NBA and someone whose career is already panning out in ways she never thought possible. Brittany Donaldson's path to the NBA is unlike that of any of her peers. A former star athlete for Sioux City North and the University of Northern Iowa, Brittany entered the league as a data analyst for the Toronto Raptors. And after only two years on the job, made the transition to assistant coach. She's one of only 11 female coaches in the entire league, the first in Raptors history, and the only female coach without any prior coaching or professional playing experience. You know, if on paper it might not look like I have that experience or that knowledge, but you know, the, that experience comes in a lot of different forms and a lot of different ways. Recently on a Raptors road trip to Minneapolis, we had the opportunity to sit down with Brittany and hear about this historic first year on the coaching staff. Brittany, thank you for sitting thank down you. with us. Thanks for joining us. So first off, Brittany, tell me about what this year has been like for you. Your first year as an assistant coach in the NBA, what's this season been like? Um, I'm just learning a lot. Right, it's, it's a different change of pace from what I was doing the past two years with the team. Um, a lot more travel, a little different schedule, but it's, it's been a heck of a ride. I'm learning a lot. Um, I'm surrounded by a great support system, so I'm just enjoying every moment of it. Was it similar to what you thought it would be? Have your expectations been met or was, has it been different than what you thought this season would be? I tried to go into it without expectations. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing there's a lot of you know, different nuances to being a coach. It's not just coaching basketball, there's a lot of other things that um, you can contribute to to put a game plan together or to help a player. So I'm just learning kind of the wide spectrum of responsibilities you can have as a coach. Brittany serves on the coaching staff with two other native Iowans, Nate Bjorgren, an assistant from Storm Lake who played at Buena Vista, and head coach Nick Nurse, a graduate of Carroll Kemper and the University of Northern Iowa. The championship winning head coach has already taken notice of Brittany's knack for the game. First of all, Brittany's uh, got a great basketball pedigree, right, with her, with her college playing, high school career, a uh, really good player. She worked in our analytics department, but she had the urge to get on the floor all the time, like uh, most coaches do, get that, get that bug, and, and we're you know, just really happy to, to get her over there. I think she sees the game, she's got some experience, she's quickly gained the respect of the players, She's doing a great job. I kind of act as a bilingual person um, on the coaching staff. You know, I can speak um, data and I can speak analytics, but I can also speak basketball. And so bridging that gap is a really important thing right now, especially in the NBA with this huge analytics movement that we're having. So I feel fortunate to be that person. Let's talk about an off day first and days where you don't have a game. What are some of the things that you're doing? Um, it's funny you say off day, we don't get a lot of those, <laughs> but I will either be in the gym with a player if he wants to get a workout in. Um, I can put his workout together, I can put him through the workout, um, or uh, if we're traveling, I'm in a coach's meeting, you know, there's a lot of different things I could be doing. So now let's talk about on actual game days, you know, I see you uh, sitting there in the second row, what, what is it that you're doing, what are you talking about with, with your cohorts back there? <laughs> Yeah, so during the game, um, a lot of us back there are tracking different things that coach would maybe want to see at halftime or after the game. I typically track uh, just deflections, just something we can kind of see, you know, are we getting hands on balls, um, are we turning our defense up? We're just trying to, to be there to support, you know, the front bench coaches and then obviously the players. Has your brain been on overload these last <laughs> three or four months? It's getting easier. It's getting, uh, the first month was a little bit of a shock just with the schedule and the travel and um, all the demands that come along with it, but like I said, it's an opportunity I couldn't pass up and I'm just trying to enjoy the ride. This won't be the end of our interview with Brittany. Over the next two nights, we'll have two more features with Brittany and her path from Sioux City North Star to NBA coach. Well, yesterday we began our three-part story on Brittany Donaldson, a former Sioux City North standout who's making her mark as a first-year assistant coach in the NBA. Today we hear about what it's like to be one of only a small collective of female coaches in professional sports. Brittany Donaldson began the 2019-20 season as part of a very exclusive group. She's one of only 11 female coaches on NBA staffs, and she's the first in the history of the Toronto Raptors. It's amazing. I haven't met um, the other 10, all of them yet, but I've met a few, and they've been extremely supportive. Um, a few of them have even reached out and been like, here's my number if you need anything. Rather than focusing on the challenges of being a female coach in the NBA, the efforts of her and her colleagues are more based on making lasting change in our culture. It's a slow, you know, transition to to get 
society to realize that we belong here, but um, to be able to, to help break that barrier is, uh, is something I don't take lightly. Do you feel like you're part of something of a movement when it comes to professional sports and integrating more women into that world? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things contributing to that. There's a lot of female athletes and female in sport um, getting the opportunity now to show what they can do, and I think that's really, really cool. Williams holds, now finds Rapido in, shot, goal! Exposure is really important, representation is really important, um, and the more we can get those things, the more young girls are going to be able to see, and uh, the more it's going to be socially accepted and, and encouraged. When you were growing up as a child, did you think of yourself as somebody who wanted to break boundaries, break mm -hmm. down walls, glass ceiling, all that stuff. Was that something that was ever in your mind or did you never really think about that when you were a kid growing up in high school or in college? I, I never really thought about it. Um, I grew up in a household and, and with parents that supported whatever I wanted to do, whether it was read a bunch of NASA articles or play my Game Boy <laughs> or play sports. They never shut any doors on me. I knew uh, maybe she would be in sports of some sort, but never Remember this. We spoke recently with Brittany's parents, Jeff and Carmen Donaldson, who still live in Sioux City. The biggest guy always sits right in front of her and she's like, I can never see her around him. <laughs> when she was little, it was, you know, just outside all the time playing and never, I guess I, I never dressed her up in really girly stuff. Um, I never was dressed up in really girly stuff. So it's like go out and get dirty and have fun and get sweaty and do what you want to do and it's okay. I was really confident in what I was doing because my parents were very supportive and so yeah I never looked at it as I'm, I'm breaking a glass ceiling or I'm breaking a barrier it was just something I was passionate about and I love to do and I just pursued it. We try to watch every game we've got the NBA package so we watch every game and it's kind of like we're a family we see her. Yeah they're going for a uh, club record 12th straight win tonight. It's pretty exciting I mean we're We'll take advantage of it while it lasts. Brittany isn't just pursuing a career as a female in a male-dominated profession, but at 26 years old, she also holds the distinction of being the youngest coach, male or female, in the entire league. A lot of people, you know, focus on the the gender difference with me, and actually I would say the age gap and, and being the youngest female is maybe um, something that is a little more overlooked. You know, if on paper it might not look like I have that experience or that knowledge, but you know, that, that experience comes in a lot of different forms and a lot of different ways. And luckily, the Raptors um, were really open-minded with that and and looked at my history and looked at my experience and, and my background and trusted that I did have enough experience. And so I was really, really grateful for that. We'll continue Brittany's story tomorrow night as she continues to share stories from this first year in the NBA and what the future looks like in years to come. Today we conclude our three-part series chronicling Brittany Donaldson's first historic year as an NBA assistant coach, a year that in some ways has been a dream come true, but also a year that she never could have imagined. You know, I'm just really thankful for the group of guys we have. Um, they've been so, so incredible with me and, and accepting me and respecting me, and they've just made my job really, really easy and really enjoyable. Being one of only 11 female assistant coaches across the entire NBA, Surely can't always be an easy job, but Brittany Donaldson still feels like she's living out a dream. I don't know, know if it's even sunk in yet. You know, th we, we move at such a fast pace and things just happen so quickly that I've just been, you know, trying to do my job and do a good job and, and work really hard. Was this, was this your dream at any point growing up? I mean, did you ever even think about yourself being in a, a, a coach on an NBA team? Was that a thought you ever had growing up? I thought I was going to play in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I would coach in the NBA. I never had this huge aspiration to coach by any means. I loved playing, I loved basketball, I loved studying it, um, but I think mainly I just had never seen somebody like me in a position like I'm in now, and so it was really hard for me to envision it. So now that I can be here and I had this opportunity, um, I'd love to be, you know, somebody a young girl can look at and say, that's something I could do someday. Yeah. Is, is, that, is that a big part of how you maybe carry yourself on a daily basis, thinking about the impact that you're having on the people that are watching you, that are aware of your story and what you've been going through? 100%, yeah. I take a lot of responsibility um, in that role, and 
it's it's really crucial for young girls to see somebody like them and, and doing something in a male dominated space. It's also crucial for young boys to see that females, you know, they can they can teach you a thing or two about sports. Is it still ever bizarre for you to think about yourself on the sideline with an NBA team with guys that you probably watched sometimes on TV <laughs> growing up back when you were in high school? So bizarre. You have to pinch yourself sometimes, right? I mean, I, I was an NBA junkie growing up, like, like you said, and a lot of those same guys are still playing in the league, and I'm up, up close and personal with them now, and it's becoming a little more normal now. You don't quite see them as this you know, star-studded athlete anymore. You see them as your opponent and somebody you want to beat. Have you asked for any selfies with anybody this year? <laughs> no, no. That's one thing I've learned is uh, don't ask for pictures with anybody because I see how often these guys get asked for pictures. So. Um, I'm never one of those people anymore. On this cold weekend in January, Brittany saw dozens of family members and friends make the drive to Minneapolis to watch Donaldson and the Raptors take on the Timberwolves. It was the first time since becoming a coach that she's had such a group come to see one of her games. Did you enjoy the game? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it just says so much about the community I grew up in. Um, driving four plus hours through a snowstorm to come see a game. Uh, everybody from my high school physics teacher to an old athletic trainer of mine to my college teammate to my mom. Um, everybody had a different hand and a different impact on my journey and it was just really, really cool to see you know, their support even after through all these years and um, it meant the world to me. It was awesome. Do you enjoy the coaching world enough that you could see yourself staying in this field for a long time? I do, yeah. and I. I, I don't know if I see myself in the NBA or at college or, you know, where I kind of, with women or with men, I don't, I don't think it really matters for me. I just love basketball and I love coaching basketball. So I see myself staying in the space for a while, but again, I'm not going to say, you know, in 10 years I see myself here. I'm just going to take it day by day and see where it, it leads. Brittany Donaldson, first female head coach in NBA history. How does that strike your ear? And if that's if that's where it takes me, that sounds great. But uh, I don't want to put you know that type of pressure on myself unless I really really want to do it. And um, you know, right now again, I'm just trying to learn where I'm at and do good at the job I'm at. But if that's where it leads, then sure, why not? Our thanks to Brittany and her family for being part of this story. Brittany recently had the opportunity to coach in the NBA All-Star Game along with the rest of the Raptors coaching staff. She and Toronto are in a surprising second place in the East Division with less than two months remaining in the regular season.